So next up, we have Neil, uh, our previous DPL. Uh, the DPL is a very um, opaque role to some people because the, the problem is you can only know what it is to be a DPL if you were actually a DPL. So what Neil is going to do this morning is share some experience says that he had while being DPL and what that all entailed. So uh, please thank Neil for taking the time to prepare that. Thank you. Can anyone hear? Ah, there we go. Okay. So thanks very much, and it's, it's good to see so many people here after a... Uh, less mic, <laughs> apparently less microphone now. Ah, um, after a um, rather good evening in the pub with lots of food and lots of good beer. Um, so that's good to see. So I wanted to give a overview as to what happened over the last year um, and the sort of things that a DPL has to deal with. Now, it should be worth bearing in mind that every DPL term is different. You all have different challenges to deal with and um, different sort of things you need to do. Now, I knew that when I took over, um, that'd be a lot of work and lots of talking to people, um, but not quite how I imagined. There's a lot more of talking to other people, so generally to the so, bits of media, but also lots of other groups, um, lots of other people within the free software community. So I wake up and I found I was elected to the post of DPL. My first thoughts would break the code of conduct, so I'm not going to say what exactly those were. Um, but it was quite exciting, so um, that was certainly a, a, an interesting time. Now, the main Things you sort of get in the first sort of, well, before you officially take office is lots of media requests. Um, so I think I had ITWire, I had Linux.com, I had a mylinuxdesktop.org or something like that, and various different things who all want um, varying levels of um, interviews with you, talking about what your plans are, and it's a really good opportunity to promote Debian and the sort of um, things that we're able to do. Additionally, you get a lot of spam. Now, I had some of this from, from being <laughs> Medi over there. Um, current DPL is nodding furiously. Um, I had a bit of experience of this with um, being on the press at contact and a couple of others. But you not only get all the spam from um, your leader at mail, which is a fairly well distributed email at the moment, but you also get all the press at spam and all the auditor spam as well. Um, and donations and trademarks and the rest. You, you, you get spam, you get a lot of spam. And um, if anyone really, really wants to train their spam filtering software with some really good data, run for DPL. It's an excellent, <laughs> excellent plan. So you have to wade through all of that. Um, there's also an archive of the previous DPL mails, uh, which is really useful. So you can run through that and find out, and find out even more spam, which is great. Um, so that was kind of uh, the first day with, was wading through that. Day one, I, I have a lot of days to go through, so I'm hoping everyone is feeling sitting very comfortably at the moment. So day one, um, no, let, let's sort of speed up a little bit. So month one, within a month, I personally released Jesse. <laughs> I'm claiming that, I'm claiming that. No one is going to take that away from me. It's all my work. Uh, but hey, we released Jesse. Now, that was an absolutely fantastic um, experience to have. Loads of fantastic press, loads of coverage from everywhere. Um, I appeared in a video conference call to um, Debian India. Um, they had a huge cake. Um, unfortunately, they didn't think they could ship any to me, and it would still be a, in an edible state. But that was a, that was a great fun thing to do. Um, more interviews again. Um, lots of this sort of happens. Um, and, yeah, so there's certainly quite a bit of press around there. Um, then you had sort of three kind of issues which had come over from uh, Lucas's um, term, sort of legal issues which you had to deal with. One's around the PHP license. Um, essentially, the PHP license says it only applies to 
PHP and derived works now, if you create a program using this license, there's then confusion because the license can't actually apply to the software that you've written. Um, be all and end all of that is essentially we are going to publish a statement um, on the Debian website somewhere saying we're going to ignore that bit because it doesn't make any sense. Um, that serves as a useful legal estoppel to say, well, it's absolutely ridiculous. We can't do anything about it, so things are fine. So hopefully that will move forward soon. LibDVD CSS is a more interesting one. We got very close to being able to accept this certainly in the form that we'd worked out, and then Japan came along. And it appears that in Japanese copyright law, um, so, so it's Japanese copyright law around um, um, DMCA is fantastic. So they've taken DMCA and then added bits on to make it even more complicated, even if it wasn't before. So this was, there's some language in there around um, Machines which, well, apparatus which facilitate the making of apparatus which facilitate copyright infringement. So this is to stop people making machines which clone cards for cable TV or something. Now, that then becomes a problem for Debian because Debian is that mechanism which then distributes libdvd CSS, which then can be used to potentially view movies which you have legally bought on whatever computer equipment you have legally bought. And obviously, this is a terrible thing, and we should block this, apparently. Um, but that's where we are. So that is, as yet, unresolved. And I really, really don't want to um, advocate going down the path of creating a non-Japan.debian.org, <laughs> because non-US.debian.org was so easy to deal with. And then ZFS. I'll get on to more of that in a minute. So spending money was also a, a useful thing. When I came into term, I said we need to spend some money. So lots of requests came in. So I approved all those. And uh, pretty much without, I think, without exception. I think no, well, I'll, I'll, I'll mention more money in a minute. Um, and the other one, which probably people don't know, is around DD certificates. I don't know if Medi's had any of these yet. But yeah, so. Um, as a, without wanting to add too much more to, to Medi's workload, as a Debian developer, you can email the DPL, and they will sign you a special certificate to say you're a Debian developer. This can take some time, um, just with the volume that, that certainly I got. Um, each one individually doesn't take too long, but just the processing of those when you have various other bits to deal with is interesting. It'd be great to automate that somewhere. So um, that was kind of month one. Month two until the end of my term. <laughs> I'm working out how hard to rant about this. I'll be good. I'll, I'll, I'll give a bit of background as to, as to where we are with this and how this came about. So four days in to my term, I receive an email from John Sullivan <coughs> saying, ha, huh, so I've read that Debian are interested in, have worked out a way of distributing ZFS. And there's major concerns with this. Um, to the state that depending on exactly how we do it, this could create major problems for Debian and could essentially send huge ripples through, through the community. There is no doubt, I think, that um, the license that ZFS is um, distributed under, CDDL, is a free license. But in my mind, and quite a few others, these licenses are not compatible with the GPL. So there's a lot of back and forth, lots of twos and fro's. Um, essentially, we'd received some legal advice from the um, Software Freedom Law Center, I think, Lucas originally sent in the request around, what can we do with this? Does, is this compatible? How does this work? What do the licenses say? And we got back quite a lot of text. I'm not entirely sure it was the exact question we asked, because um, 
for those that have dealt with lawyers, I'm sure you, you, you may recognize some of this, but, but we asked about how is this license compatible, can we distribute it, and the answers we got back, I will summarize as saying, you're not going to get sued. <laughs> Which isn't exactly what I wanted to know, but fine. So not only if we did get sued, then it's unlikely um, that there'd be any damages because Debian doesn't have any money. I'll get on to that in a moment as to exactly how much money Debian does have. Um, but it, it's unlikely that anyone would want to sue Debian. It would be bad publicity, etc. But that wasn't the question that I wanted to know. I wanted to know how compatible these licenses were. Um, so we received that advice. Um, I then had lots of meetings with John um, from Free Software Foundation, Bradley from Conservancy, and FTP masters and the maintainers and everything. And eventually, we get to this truce, shall we say, where we work out we shall distribute it using DKMS in the Contrib repository. Now, Contrib is an interesting um, place for those who don't know what Contrib is. We have three main suites in Debian. One of those is main. Main consists of programs which are fully free and can be distributed and essentially uphold our Debian free software guidelines. Uh, Non-free is for things we're allowed to distribute but don't meet those guidelines. In between there, you have some, a bit of a gray area. Things that are free, but depend on non-free stuff. Or somehow the licensing doesn't meet a self-inclusive main. An example of this, so this doesn't just have to be licensing either. This is also around functionality, because I remember many years ago, early in the Debian days, we had ScumVM, which is free, but only existed to run what, at the time, was non-free games. Then Beyond a Steel Sky came along as free game and excellent, it could go into main. So the, the point of Contrib is not just a licensing thing, it's around usefulness itself. We talked to, F I talked to FTP masters, um, big thanks to Noodles as well who helped, um, who helped with some of this as a, I'm not going to call him a lawyer in training but he has been doing a law degree recently so Make of that what you will. Um, and essentially, we, we worked out the point that there is a promise we make to our users when they use main. You can take main. You can apply DFSG to that. You can modify it. And as long as you essentially send the source on, etc., you're going to be OK. And you can send this to your friends. It is entirely unclear, that's probably the political way of putting it, but it is very unclear as to what happens if you take ZFS on Linux, combine it with a Linux kernel, and then distribute it to your friends because it, it has a binary format. So no one entirely knows um, exactly what that means. So we would be breaking that promise to our users, hence, this is why it's going to end up in, um, in Contrib. So excellent. So we have a wonderful um, position that works. Conservancy are OK with it. Free Software Foundation are OK with it. FTP Masters are OK with it. And the maintainers is OK with it. Fantastic. It goes into new. And then Ubuntu publishes statement. <laughs> Ubuntu published a statement saying they're shipping the binary. On advice from a senior free software lawyer. This starts to make me quite annoyed. For those who don't understand Britishness, quite annoyed is, well, well go look it up. So, so, search, yeah, it, it put me off my tea. I was mildly miffed. Um, <laughs> because we'd I'd worked really hard to reach this point where, I mean, the original positions, I think, of Free Software Foundation, and shout at me, John, if I'm wrong, is don't ship this at all. Um, and, and, and the important point is here is not around CDDL being a free license. 
or even being a proprietary license. If we allow a GPL incompatible license to be linked like this in the Linux kernel and distributed as binary, that is exactly the same legal precept as binary non-free modules, as proprietary modules. What we're talking about here isn't around, is it a free license or not? It's an incompatible license. If we allow an incompatible license, no matter how wonderful we may or may not find the CDDL, that is our defense to stop binary proprietary modules being loaded with the kernel and distributed with the kernel. It's the thing that we use to stop essentially proprietary software appearing and not being able to be used um, on our devices. So, going back, there was this wonderful announcement. I was then asked by SFLC if they could publish the advice that they had sent Debian, um, saying we won't be sued. I thought this was quite odd. So I asked why, and a lot of the commentary was around, well, if we, if we publish this, then Oracle won't sue Debian. I can't see Oracle suing Debian, to be honest, at all, ever. But, so that was quite odd, and I thought, but why would you do this? This, this goes against the position that your client, the Debian project, has taken, which is, no, it's not just about the legality, it's about the morality of combining these two things. And Debian has always been keen to remain a free software distribution and keep it that way. So then an opinion piece comes out from the um, SFLC, which looks very similar to the advice we'd received, except with Debian's name filed off. This saga is continuing. It hasn't finished yet. Um, it will continue for a long time. Um, I just hope that us, as Debian, recognize our role within the wider community um, and work not just as Debian, not just as Debian versus Fedora, not just as SPI versus SFLC versus Conservancy or Free Software Foundation. This is an issue which is important to all of us who care about software freedom and the ability to use our devices together. Enough of a rant about ZFS. Delegations. Um, I could be wrong. I believe I'm probably the first DPL who ended with fewer delegates than they started with. Um, so, press, publicity, bits got combined into one. Um, this is now just the fantastic, I have to say, publicity team. Um, I don't know if anyone's dealt with them recently, but they're incredibly active, and the amount of stuff we're getting now is, is absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Jim. Especially if you're listening to the stream at home. I think Laura is probably there. Hello. Um, auditor got changed into the treasurer delegation. Um, this was a slight confusion with the role. Um, they started getting emails saying, can you please audit our programs and make sure they're secure or something. Um, for people who are handling monetary books, this was a little bit confusing for them. So just to highlight the sort of differences here, this is now the treasurer. Front desk got de-delegated. Um, I spoke to Dam, I think, at a mini dev conf in Cambridge. They wanted me to update the delegation because they were changing people or moving people around. Um, I asked what they wanted actually delegating, and then we realized there wasn't anything to delegate. It was just running a process and looking at applications and not making any decisions. Then DevConf chairs. Now, this one was fairly contentious, and I'm particularly sad that I wasn't able to help deal with this um, during my term. Um, essentially, it's a, the role of DevConf chairs is a very difficult job, and so is organizing all of DevConf. Um, how do you ensure that there is accountability to the project for what you're spending project money on, um, but at the same time allow the local organizers of, a, of, of the event to actually get on and run it? Um, and Due to and, and create a great event that, that we've all come to expect. Um, 
Sorry, Mehdi, a fun one for you, dealing with Deb Comp chairs. Um, so I've handed it over to him, so hope we'll see where it comes from there. Hmm? Easy subject, apparently. Excellent. Um, then in my final bits for the um, mail, I, I delegated for four hours the Debian trolling team. This was given to Paul Tag, and it had one power only, which was to declare what color t-shirt the DPL shall wear. Now, I was clever enough to time limit it, because over those four hours, well, there was a few changes of shirts, shall we say. Um, and you can probably see sort of the lateness of the hour throughout the evening at the first. All happy, excellent, great. Then getting very tired, and by the end of it, what the hell, I'm running out of t-shirts. <laughs> oh, punch someone, who, or, well, possibly Paul Tag. <laughs> money. In my platform, I said we have too much money and we should spend it. Now, every request that came in, I replied and said, spend the money already. <laughs> People said, can I have... 2,000 euros for a sprint. Um, I said, have, let's go up to 2,500 euros because I don't want people coming back again and saying, oh, we went over the budget by 100 euros or so. Um, did a lot of work with um, Debian system administrators as well to get things like new disks, improve hardware, things like this. So this is just the money at SPI um, in the various earmarks that we have. And so... Very pleased to say that with this great amount of spending that I authorised and told everyone to do, we ended up with more <laughs> money than we started with the game. Oh, dear. Let's keep it up. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> April doesn't, April doesn't uh, yeah, have yeah, a 30, 31st day. And 30th. <laughs> so, so Margaret was saying, Margaret spotted the deliberate mistake I put in my slides to make sure everyone was awake. End of April, um, which I took for to be. It's a special day. Um, it's a very special day in this case. But so anyway, we ended up with, once again, more money than we started the year with. So I'd certainly encourage people to... Donate more. <laughs> donating more is good. Uh, uh, <clears throat> DevConf uh, fundraising went through the SPI account. So a yep. lot of that money is already earmarked for DevConf, right? Um, yes, but it was also earmarked for the previous DevConf. Okay. So it's... And other TOs also get more money during that year. So yes. Yeah. Isn't there an, another problem with the date? Isn't it one year off, both? Because you started in 2015. Um, no? That was my term. No? No? That's no? no, no. no, no. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, 14, 15. 15, 15, 16. No, yeah, that works, yeah, okay. Um, but the numbers are right anyway, so. Uh, just, it was very late last night and very early this morning, hence the coffee, but. Um, yeah, so we still have quite a lot of money. We should probably spend some of that. That'd be a good idea. Um, Yes. Stand up. Stand up. So DebConf in Hawaii? DebConf Hawaii, apparently. Um, that certainly helps. So. The presentations are in Friday, see? Yeah, so um, anyone who's interested that the thing was the presentations for DebConf 18 are on Friday. If you want to propose DebConf Hawaii, that would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> especially as it's summer back at home and winter now in Cape Town, although it's been 
reasonable, a little bit cold and raining a lot, so a lot like a British summer anyway, so I feel quite at home. Um, other bits which I wanted to do, um, bike sheds, the new name for PPAs, um, as FTP masters decided to call them. Um, I think it came from original joke, um, which I made in, in, in one of my talks, and they kindly decided that apparently my humour is so bad that it can be named, turned into a code name for something we do technically. Um, as I understand it, the bits that are left here is stuff to do with wanna build and how that integrates. And hopefully, at some point, um, maybe by 2020, we will get bike sheds. I'd encourage anyone who is particularly interested in this, go talk to Andreas Barth, ABBA. He's not here, excellent, so I can, uh, I, I can volunteer him to be the point person here. Go talk to him, try and work out what, if, if you want this. Yes, Mehdi. Uh, does it work? Yeah. Uh, I suggest anyone interested to go talk to Aurélien Jarnot, who is the maintainer of the Wanna Build and the Builty Network today. Excellent. Aurélien Jarnot, Aurel32. Good. That's the next stage for that. Um, I think that did work quite well is outreach. Um, so certainly with the outreach team, I think I said Debian will guarantee a minimum of four slots per session. And so that's gone really well. It's something that I was keen of and trying to increase the amount of outreach we do um, and making sure that we can do that. Um, excellent. I do have some time for questions as well. Um, so there's lots of people to thank. Um, particularly like to thank at this point Lucas. Um, I know that when I think Steve took over his DPL, it's like, ha, you're DPL, congratulations, see you. <laughs> um, but I got a fantastic handover from, from Lucas, lots of detail about and introductions to various people as well, um, which was really, really handy. A huge thanks to everyone who's helped me during my term. Um, particular thanks to these three organizations, Free Software Foundation and the Free Software Conservancy, um, Software Freedom Conservancy even, um, trying to, who were able to support uh, my role, um, not only with just questions and interacting with the rest of the community, but a good amount of moral support as well. Um, these people know what it is to be the figurehead for a large and public organization, um, so particularly John, Karen, and Bradley from the Free Software um, Foundation and, um, and Conservancy particularly. i um, like to thank them particularly much on this speech. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and you know I said Debian has money. Well, these sort of people are ones who also help um, uphold software freedom within the things. And quite frankly, they also need money to do it. Um, so go join these people if you haven't already. Conservancy, for example, this week, if you join this week, then there is a generous donor who's going to match your funds. So I encourage everyone here to sign up for them. Also, if you're at a conference and Conservancy are there, they throw an awesome cocktail party as well for people. <laughs> Um, with some rather low budget. low budget, low budget, but you will get the exec director of the um, of Conservancy cooking you chili. Um, also, like to thank my employer, um, Calabra, who were absolutely fantastic during the year. Um, they're actually, a, I think, for the first year this time, a gold sponsor of DevConf, um, which was really handy. Um, so, unfortunately, due to um, South Africa customs. We didn't have our usual bump at the jobs fair and, and stuff like that, um, which has now arrived. So thanks very much for the auditing, for like driving down to the depot and picking it up and the rest of it. Um, so there's loads of stickers and things like that. And is there anyone from the Orga team in the audience? Cover your ears. Because we've also got these flyers. And on the back of the flyers, they get made into paper airplanes. They're absolutely <laughs> fantastic. It says, it says, Air Debcomp, apparently. So, yeah. Yeah, but everyone has permission for a flyer. Everyone has a permission for a flyer and then to turn it into paper airplanes. So that's fantastic. So I'll shove those out on the things. Um, 
yeah, the responsible person <laughs> says that, that we can all make paper airplanes, so that's great. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it for me. Um, we have time for questions, I believe. I'm not seeing a yellow or red sign. Oh, 10 minutes, excellent. It's one at the back. Thanks for the summary. Um, and while seeing these FSF software con conservancy logos over there, um, did you make any progress with the, well, interpretation or stubbornness? Sorry, about, you did you make any progress about the, well, inter uh, interpretation of the GFDL? That seems to be some kind of stubbornness on, on the, well, maybe FSF side, maybe on the Debian side. But it's so not in the interest of, I think, our users not to ship documentation, to ship free documentation, just because licenses say, well, there are invariant sections about uh, back and front cover texts. And maybe we can keep this up going again while, while all involved people are here at TEPConf. Yeah, so um, the, yeah, thanks very much. So this is one of the, I mean, the FSF and Debian have similar, let's just say actually minor disagreements about what we think is free and what we're trying to produce. Um, I think this is oddly the one area where Debian is trying to be more free than the Free Software Foundation in this particular case. Um, now, the wonderful thing about this talk is that we have people here who can answer that. So, John. <laughs> uh, we are working on it. Uh, uh, I, you know, personally, I want to see everybody on the, like Debian and FSF on the same page, uh, particularly about definitions of what constitutes free and not free software documentation material. Uh, I think that we've had a good uh, several years in a row, actually, of uh, just good conversations and uh, figuring out how to move forward. So that's obviously uh, one of the more complicated areas that's been an issue for quite a while. But you know, we're interested in talking about it. I've gotten very good responsiveness out of uh, Lucas and Neil and uh, Zach, and uh, had a chance to meet Mehdi here too. So I think that we'll continue to have very frank conversations about everything and hopefully make some progress. Great. Ah. So it seems that you spent a fair amount of time work, working on ZFS. Um, I, was, I was wondering if you, well, one idea I have had uh, for a long time is that we might it might be useful to have some kind of uh, Debian uh, legal advisory team. Um, people who are from inside Debian and that could uh, collect the advice from all organizations that provide advice to Debian and just build up the various proposals and dig this up to let the, to let the DPL decide. I don't think it makes sense to delegate the power to decide on this. That should yeah, stay so till the DPL. So, so one thing that I think would be particularly interesting is um, increasing Debian's options for who we can get legal advice from. Um, certainly as, in my term, we had a, a new pro bono um, uh, legal advice around trademarks, um, which is Marie, who's been helping us with trademarks. Um, there's various options I think we have, um, because I think the traditional saying is, if you put three lawyers in a room, you'll get seven different opinions. Um, so. Certainly, that's certainly useful. And, and that kind of interestingly touches on a question that I think the project needs to think about, which is what does the project want from the DPL? Um, the DPL is an interesting position where it's not entirely clear what's expected there. I mean, is this a administrator who makes sure and checks all the finances and, and improves things like that? Or is it a spokesperson who goes and does a lot of press events and turns up at events, is and talks to various different organisations? Um, 
or is it a mediator who goes and um, deals with conflict within teams? Um, sometimes even within packengers, I've received some of those, which is tricky. And I'm not convinced that this is a role that one person can take on, um, especially if they're not working full time on the job and be able to achieve everything that, that they want to. Um, I don't have the answer to this, but it's certainly something that people should think about when it comes to um, the DPL role and, and what's expected of them. Um, I think we have time for one, maybe two short questions, if anyone else has any of those. We've got five minutes. No? Oh, yes. So what was the most rewarding single interaction you had with somebody during your term? And what was the least? <laughs> what was the most and the least rewarding interactions I had? Um, probably, I think the most rewarding I mentioned already, which was that video call with Debian India. Um, they actually had, I think, eight or nine release parties all at the same time, all which were equally packed. So being able to appear and represent the project um, over there was by a, eventually, once we tried seven different video streaming systems and ended up with, I think I used a GStreamer pipeline over a socket to a web thing. It was horrible, but eventually we, we got there. That was absolutely fantastic, and seeing this massive cake, which, which, they, which they baked for, for the Debian release. Um, the, not necessarily the worst, but the most annoying, I think, um, interaction was um, from a least rewarding. Least rewarding. Um, least rewarding is a member Someone who used to interact with the project quite a bit um, and doesn't have access to the BTS or various list servers at the moment um, emailed me and said, what's happening to the team survey for the ITS? What? <laughs> yeah, so, so that, that is a bit of a what. Um, eventually I managed to decrypt that this is actually talking about the bug tracking system and the team survey is something that was about 10 years ago when Steve did it. Um, someone believes that it's entirely dysfunctional and the uh, BTS's team are all rubbish and aren't doing any jobs and um, are annoyed at being banned still. So I received a number of emails from this person. Um, I wrote back Oh, I was going to write back, um, and then eventually I decided that this is not going to stop anything, so I ignored it. Um, very, very quick. What's the most bizarre interaction you have had? <laughs> as a What's the most bizarre interaction I've had? Um, the most bizarre interaction I had was before I took office. I walked into my local running club, um, which meets in a pub, obviously, because we're British, um, turned up and then six or seven people I know said, hey, congratulations, let me buy you a pint for being DPL, which was great, but it sort of emphasized to me actually what a big deal Debian is and how much it actually has influenced beyond just the free software people we know. People rely on it, they really use it, and they love what we do and wanted to carry on doing that. And I am out of time now, so I'll just say thank you very much for a fantastic year. It's been a hell of an experience. Please, if you think about running, do so. You won't regret it. <laughs>